welcome if you're new here welcome back if you've been here before my name is bell this is the bell perspective and today we're going to be reviewing the changeling by victor lavelle but before we get into that i have a few housekeeping items i need to cover with you let's get into that first first things first this is a growing channel this is a growing channel and i need your help if you can hit that subscribe button for me, it will do me a solid. It will do me a solid. I'm trying to grow my channel. I have a goal of how many subscribers I want to get. I'm inching up there, but I need your help. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. If you've already subscribed, that'll help me out. And also get down in the comments. All of these things in combination with each other will help me. I can reach my goal. So go ahead and make sure that you like the video comment down below, and also subscribe if you haven't already. I have another announcement I want to make. I have a book club, free book club called Black Lituations, okay? We meet every month virtually, so anybody ideally throughout the country or overseas could join us as we discuss the book. So June 22nd, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be reviewing Decent People by Deshaun Charles Wilson. It's got about, I think it's got a 3.8 on goodreads.com, which is a really high score. I'm excited about reading this book. June the 22nd, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's a Thursday. We meet virtually. If you want to join the book chat, the book discussion, Get down in the description box. I have all the details, all the information. It's totally free. The only thing you have to do is purchase the book. And the Changeling, I don't know why I keep saying again, but Changeling. I love this book cover. So that's one thing, one of the good things that I'm going to say about this book. I love the cover. I love the cover of this book. And I'm going to put the, the cover art here. On, on my side here. I love, 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 love the cover of this book. I think that's one of the first things that drew me to the book because um, I have so many books in my Amazon cart. But I will say that this, the cover drew me and they, and they, and they tell you that you should never judge a book by its cover, but sometimes it's hard, right? Sometimes it's hard. So anyway, let's get into talking about the author first and then my overall thoughts and my rating of this the Changeling by Victor Lavelle. So it's categorized as a horror film, um, and Victor Lavelle has written several other books, a lot of them uh, fantastical, you know, fairy tale ish, horror fiction ish. He's written another book called Slap Boxing with Jesus, which I need to read that because. That sounds interesting. Slap boxing with Jesus, um, the ecstatic big machine and the devil and silver. It's currently teaching at Columbia University and the changeling is actually going to be a um, adapted into a TV series on Apple Apple Plus, and Lakeith Stanfield is actually going to play, I'm assuming, Apollo, who's the main character in this story. And I can absolutely see Lakeith Stanfield playing in a horror, sci-fi, horror, fairy tale-ish type of story. He gives he gives that energy. So I can see him playing in that in that book. So Victor Lavelle, a racial uh person. His father is from Syracuse, New York. His mother is from Uganda, and she was escaping from the Civil War. You'll see a lot of his biography written into this book as well. Um, he is very eccentric when you, when you hear him talk, and very intelligent, um, and his writing style is top tier. I love it. I love it. I was watching an interview with him that he had did with Lit, which is a, a book podcast, book review, YouTube channel. So check it out when you get an opportunity, L-I-T. Uh, and I think it's, 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 it's for black folks. I think, I think the moderator reads all kinds of books, but I think he, he is a black man. So, you know, we always like to support black folks around here. Uh, he talks about how the original scene of the book was supposed to be where Emma does this awful deed, this big, awful, unspeakable act. That was supposed to be the first scene. 
editors said came to him and said, listen, hey, I understand that this is where you're trying to go, but you might want to hold off on getting there first. Why don't you do some detailing, explain your characters, give them backstory so that readers can then uh, get to know those characters and become a little bit more invested in them. I will say that was great advice. However, the way that it was executed, I don't know if he, I don't know if what they, what he did, they truly had in mind because I feel like he went back too far. He went all the way back. So let's get into the, let's get into the book. So let's get into the book. The character, main character's name is Apollo Kagwa. He is a biracial character. His mother is from Uganda. His father is from C white man from Syracuse, New York. The setting is in New York City. Uh, he, it's, it's Queens and Manhattan, all over the place. He pretty much details, but New York is, is the setting. It talks about how Apollo's mother became a U.S. citizen, how U.S., how Apollo's mother met Apollo's father, Brian West. It goes all the way back. I'm not really sure if all of those details were really needed. I don't know. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in my dislike section. So the theme of the book really has like a fairy tale theme, fairy tale, lots of fairy tales being told. I think one of the, excuse me, one of the typical themes of a fairy tale is that the woman is the protagonist. The woman is typically finding the issue, finding this, this, the scene, finding the area that's wrong and is truly trying to conquer those things. Typically, that's happening in, in fairy tales. Um, in this particular tale, this particular story, that's a little bit different. It's the man that's setting out on the odyssey to find, to fight the big bad, to settle the score, all of the things. There's several references. I mean, every which way to Maureen Sendak's book, Outside Over There, you'll see a lot of the same themes. You'll see a lot of the same tropes within the book detailing Maureen Sendak. Uh, I'm sorry, not Maureen Sendak, but Outside Over There. Even quotes, direct quotes from the actual book itself. And I'll talk a little bit more, again, why in my dislike piece. I understood where he was trying to go, but I just think the execution was just not necessarily... I don't think the dismount was there like it should have been, like it should have been or could have been. So in the story, Apollo Cagua married Emma, can't remember her last name, but they got together in their 30s. They took Apollo a while to, to win Emma over. She finally decided to date Apollo and they decided to get married and then they had a kid. Six months within that kid being born, Emma starts showing these signs of depression and just going through a lot of different things. And Emma keeps saying that the baby that she has is not a real baby. And so there's that murky, lurky, creepy kind of air that's within the book that I'm not going to lie. As I was reading it, there was a couple times where I was like, Ooh, what's the noise? Like, I was like, oh, what's that? What's that? Is that, is that a shadow to what I see? Hold on. Like, really reading the book, but also checking behind me. Like, checking, make sure, it's keeping all the lights on. Reading it only during the day. <laughs> reading it only during the day. So, there were times where I was a little bit creeped out. I'm not going to lie. There were, the way that he writes, that there's a lot of cliffhangers throughout the book. And it makes it worthwhile. It makes it makes you want to get over the hump and see what's on the other side. Um, again, I think the overall messaging of the book is that life is complicated. Life is not a fairy tale. There is no such thing as happily ever after. If you do get a happily ever after, it's more so a happily ever right now. And we see Emma saying that at the, in probably one of the last lines of the book, she's saying, you know, happily ever after really isn't achievable. I'm just happy in this moment that I have what I've, I want and what I've always wanted. Um, okay, so let's get into some of my likes. This book does a really great job of setting up suspenseful scenes. 
So setting up the this, this scenes, anything that's the big bad or any creepy thing that he's describing, the scenes are built very well. Definitely creepy, super unearthing sometimes. Just like, okay, what am I reading? Maybe I need to put it down for a minute. Let me go watch some puppies and babies because it was a little creep, right? It was a little creepy. Definitely does a great job of executing and building up suspenseful scenes. Scenes. The writing itself, top tier. Love, 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 love how the writing, how was his writing style. He uses very short sentences, which creates a staccato almost, like a, a literary staccato. And it makes you, it's so short and direct in these short sentences that it makes you feel like, oh my God. You know, it's kind of like a, like, like a punch to the face, like, bam, and then bam, and then bam. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like almost like a literary staccato with the way that the sentences are, are drafted. Sorry, y'all, I had to take a quick call. Somebody, everybody calling, every time I get on, every time I get online, y'all, somebody calling. Anyway, the way that he writes, phenomenal. I love, love, love the way his, I love his writing style, the, his word toys. Excellent, 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 excellent. I think another thing that I liked about the book is that there's a certain real, there's realism within the book. So he talks about the differences between the expectations between mothers and fathers. So the, the bar has, we all know this, but the bar has been set low, low, low for fathers and then particularly black fathers as well so a man can be walking down the street with his child and there will be a red carpet rolled out for this father because he's literally just holding his child and it's 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 showing him that he's with his his kid maybe for five minutes right whole red carpet roses are thrown at his feet a woman you know she takes a sick day and she's labeled as a as a, a bad mother you know there there is an expectation she wants to go back to work and she's labeled as a bad mother so the expectation for mothers and fathers are totally different and i think that the book explores that um and talks about it as well in a real in a real way another piece that they talk about is the racism that's alive and well in, in this beautiful country um he talks about it he t i don't say i don't want to say that he tackles it and it's not through it's not constantly racist 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 it's not like the monsters or the big bad within this book is racist well part of it part of it but not the full thing um but he talks about it in a real way and i again appreciate the realism Let's, let's get into some of the things that I did not like. Let's get into that. I did not like the fact that he wasted characters and scenes. There were parts of this book. I'll name characters, but I won't get into the detail because I don't want I wanted to be spoiler free this time. Hal, what was the point? I don't understand the point. Somebody, please, if you've read this book, get down in the comments and tell me what the whole point of Cal was. What was the point of the island? Get in the comments and tell me what the point of all of these things were. It it just doesn't make sense. And if your if your response was going to tell me that they used that to connect to follow back to Emma, that was poorly executed. It still didn't make sense. One thing that I love about Game of Thrones, and I say this every time I read a book, and maybe I probably shouldn't do this, but I do it anyway. I love how Game of Thrones literally uses every character no matter what they did so if a, a character has a line in a scene in season two they're pouring water and that's all they're doing you're gonna see that same character and they have a line right there's some sort of emphasis on them you see them they're talking there's something going on with that person you're gonna see them in season six and it's gonna tie back to something I love how there are no wasted characters. That's a pet peeve of mine. Do not introduce me to a character and they're only there as a placeholder or they're only being, being utilized as some sort of conduit between the protagonist and maybe the antagonist. I just, I don't like, I don't like that. I don't like that. Don't use people, if you're going to introduce a character, use them all the way. Use them completely as a resource. 
fully, right? Make them useful. Don't introduce me to people and they ain't got nothing. To, they don't have nothing to do. I don't like that. The other piece is that while he created beautifully mastered, suspenseful, thrilling scenes, once you got over to the hump, over the hump, over the cliffhanger, it was a flop. I'm like, this is what you wrote. You did all of this to fall flat, and he it was entirely too many times to fall flat. Um. There were pieces where people had magical powers, unexplained magical powers. How did this person have magic? Where did this come from? Are we going to talk about it? Are you just saying that this person is just floating in midair and aren't going to explain how? Are they Are they a fairy? Are they, Do they have some sort of mythical powers? Do they come from some sort of... Like, you're not going to be able to just say, this person is floating in midair or can read my mind, but then don't explore and tell me exactly how this person became. Or, like, you again, wasteful and what was the point? There was no backstory. I have so many questions about scenes, about characters, there were times in in the scenario where I don't feel like the character really was able to flush out exactly what was happening. So there were some really peculiar things happening, right? Unearthly things happening. And I felt like the main character was just taking it in in stride. Like he was just going on a, a stroll and watching the birds fly in the air and, you know, bunnies hopping in the grass. Like, no, this is strange. This is supernatural things happening and you're acting like it's just Tuesday. I don't, I didn't like, it didn't match. It didn't match. I needed more of, I needed the character to, to really be confused and as realistically, you know, like how you would be if you saw someone floating in midair. And there was no explanation for it. I needed that. I needed the character to be able to suss out and flush out their real, true, personal feelings. Um, it just wasn't there. And then the other piece was, it was just disconnected and disjointed. There was just so many pieces that didn't make sense. We'll go from one chapter to the next. And I don't understand how we got here. There was no flow. And I read every page. There really just was no flow from one chapter to the next. It was very disjointed completely disconnected again he draws a lot from our syntax outside over there but again help me understand why this is the focal point and i i get it you're using some elements from that story but again help me understand bring it home there were a lot of questions that i had about this book and they were never answered and i don't like that i i hate to sound like i'm just going in i hate to sound like i'm going in but it really, it, there was really, there was so much more that could be done with the story that I just don't feel like it, it, it just didn't happen. It didn't happen. So anyway, I'm going to give this book a two and a half out of five, two and a half out of five, because there was so much more that could have been done, could have been done, but it wasn't. And I feel like my dislikes were longer than, my dislikes list was long, longer than my likes list. And that's never a good sign, not for me personally. Again, the writing style is very, very good. I'm going to give them another try when I check out Slap Boxing with Jesus. I'm going to review that on my channel as well. Um, but yeah, two and a half out of five, y'all. Two and a half out of five. Try Read it at your own risk. That's what I'm going to say. It was, it was, the writing in the first half of the book was excellent. Building up, I thought it was going to be a wonderful, you know, 400 pages. And it really could have been 200. Okay, it really could have been 200. 150. It really, it really didn't need to be what it was. Y'all, those are my thoughts on The Changeling by Victor Lavelle. Y'all get down in the comments. Let me know what you think if you've read the book. If you haven't read the book, are you interested? Let's talk a little bit about some of the elements, my dislikes, my likes, some of those things. You guys get in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget, Black Lituations, my, my virtual book club, is completely free to join. All the information will be in the description box. We're going to be reviewing uh, or discussing Decent People next month, June 22nd. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's a Thursday. Again, it's virtual, so you don't have to get up out your bed. You can be right in your bed with your phone on a virtual call. You just got to read the book, okay? That's all. Get in the comments. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.